And um, yeah, uh, I'm the composer, vocalist, pianist, and um, guitarist for a band called Vindictive Regeneration. I also have um, a video game development company, and um, I'm just working on a lot of different projects. But uh, today we're here to talk about Vindictive Regeneration. So tell me about it. How long did you? How long ago did you start that project? Um, I started the project about. Um, 2014 and it kind of sat in the background for a bit and then around 2019 i decided to get all the riffs together that i've been working on and tell a unique not really unique but interesting story it's about um, mental health uh, mental illness and um, finding yourself um it was the first album is out on spotify and on Apple Music and a few other places. But um, we're working on a concept of trilogy albums. How did, so let me, let me start there. How does one write a trilogy album? Like, do you start going into it with that in, in mind? Or do you work on the first album and then decide it becomes a sequel, a trilogy? Like, how do you get there when you're writing? Well, first of all, I... Um, I have a mental illness, schizoaffective disorder, bipolar type two. And I think it's really important to talk about that and kind of remove the stigma because there's an incredible amount of creativity that can be milked out of that. Um, it gives you a different perspective. So the first album was an, a, a culmination, really a culmination of all of my years of experience. I'd been playing guitar since I was about 12 um piano since i was about five years old and um it's been a passion of mine you can look up uh paul messier or vindictive regeneration oh that's what i'm doing wrong my bad i have i have like a error going on uh for my camera yeah uh did you check your settings and then do the google um reset your settings not in the two or three minutes that I had to okay. refresh real quick. I didn't uh, do it. <laughs> that might that might help you. Other than that, IOBits, um, malware fighter, advanced system care, that kind of stuff could help. Um, but yeah, so there it is. Um, and um, yeah, the first album, I originally intended it to be a one-off. And then I had a series of strange events that led me to kind of do a lot of research into religion, um, my problems with religion, and kind of coming to the conclusion that I'm an omnist. I believe in everything and nothing. Um, and a lot of the ideas here are based on religious context, the Abrahamic religions. So the uh, mascot of our band is Azrael, the angel of death. And that's the protagonist. So if you'd like to, um, feel free to check out um, the first track, An End Premature. And you can find it as the third video. So this blends album one to album Wait, did two. I, did I have the right one right here? You had the right one. Okay. Yes. I didn't see it titled that. That's what threw me off. A beginning over here, sorry. I want to also talk about all the the music that you do for for video games. Yes. While it's jamming, I'm gonna I have to jump over to this other screen. It's gonna look weird for a second on on their end, but uh, why is this doing that? There we go. And so my journey began with the end of the world. I faced my demons. I traveled the earth, only to end it in an instant. But little did I know, the end was merely a beginning. I'm covered by wires and tubes pumping fluids into my body. 
So, like, how do you get in the mindset to write this kind of music? Um, honestly, it's a combination of things. Um, I find that an altered state helps if you can manage to keep yourself productive. So often I compose early in the morning. Um, it's one of the first things I do. And I make sure I have my coffee, um, tobacco, and marijuana. And I specifically set the intention. If I had if I had any, I would smoke with you, but I smoked my last bowl this morning. Oh, no worries. Uh, how, how do you how did you get into the the video game industry? So I've wanted to do that for a long, long time. I worked at um, Volt VMC, which is the Quality Assurance Department of Electronic Arts, or was before they were bought out, and then they changed to Keyword Studios. Um, I worked on games like Crisis Three, Medal of Honor, Warfighter, Fuse. Um, Command and Conquer, um, quite a few different projects. Those are all awesome games. How do you get into yeah. that though? Like, what what did so, you what'd you do? Um, first of all, they're studying games because games are a medium, just like music. And what you can do is you can analyze what messages are being communicated and how they're being taught, because ultimately a game designer is a teacher. And just like when I'm working on the concept albums, I'm having to instruct and teach people about these various concepts, especially when they're hidden or kind of veiled. So about it's all about how you communicate to someone who is unfamiliar with what you're talking about. So some really good games like Hades and um, Legacy of Cain, Castlevania, I, I could go on and on, but there are legendary games that teach very effectively. Now, I went to Vancouver Film School for game design, and I found it a waste of money. Anybody who's actually thinking about that, I would say play more games and try to start an indie studio, join some game jams, work with people. Um, and then you'll find opportunities start to crop up. Um, building that portfolio is really important, but there is a competitive aspect. So just make sure you know what you want because a lot of people don't know what they want and then they invest 10 grand, 30 grand. I know for me, it was around 40 grand and um, I never saw the value of that money come back to me. Not yet. So you learn more from like tutorial videos and stuff than you did from going to the school. Yes, but um, if I were to shout out a couple places, the gamedev.tv, um, those are some of the instructors that taught me. And they are actually very good when they're not limited by a curriculum. So gamedev.tv offers cheap sometimes free courses and they have a Discord community. You can find me there. Um, though I get quite busy, I highly recommend their beginning courses. If you're looking at a career in game design or level design, uh, programming art, they have you covered. That is dope. Hell yeah. Good shout out to you. Dude, did you bring the, the hot sauce? I got the pickles. Ugh, I nasty. Got the hot sauce. You got the pickles. I got the Valentinas. You got everything. I got the spicy mayo. Oh, you came, you came prepared. You came prepared for sure. What uh, what movie or TV show have you seen the most? Where if I ask you trivia on this movie or TV show, it's impossible you get stumped. I'm really not a movie guy. Um, it would be better to ask about video games. And I would suggest the Legacy of Kane franchise. That wasn't, that wasn't the option. Okay. But what do you say, the um, Legacy of Kane? Legacy of Cain. Is Cain with a C or a K? K. All right. Let me see what I can do. But uh, okay, I got some. I, I got some trivia on it. We'll, we'll get there, dude. What can okay. we? What can we expect from you musically from from now to the end of the year? Um, I'm really trying to get a bassist and a drummer involved. So I would really like to play a couple shows here at Vern's or Dickens. Um, I talked to Jeff Bury about Loud as Hell. Now that's worth shouting out. Uh, in Canada, we have a strong metal scene. There's tons of bands like Witherfall, Horrify, um, with Conviction, several Crimson Caliber. Um, and the scene is really getting bigger and bigger. So Loud as Hell happens in August. I, and then there's the CEMR Festival um, in Edmonton. So I heavily recommend that you uh, check those out if you're ever in Canada.
I've been to Canada once, but it was when I was in high school. It didn't, I mean, it counts, but it was kind of like a field trip thing. It wasn't any musical related thing. So I'm definitely due to do some kind of music thing uh, up in Canada and, and see some locals. And you named a couple cool ones with Conviction and Crimson Caliber. We know those bands for sure. Yeah. So, um, so with Amphal, what are some of your ambitions? Because we just saw you release a track. We just saw you release... Uh, you've been building up to this for years. <laughs> See, like, you flipped it on me. Come on, let's. Uh, so for for AM Fall, we're we're it's 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 really hard to promote because it's so many different people on, and every single song is different. But uh, so there's no way we could play a show. It's all just like an online based thing. But uh, it's fun just just kind of seeing a side project come to life. But my friend, mm. I do have some legacy of Kane trivia. In Legacy of Cain, the video game, what is the name of the very first town you enter? Okay, that stumps me because you're not you're not a vampire yet. Um, I can re- recite the original entry to the game. Um, but the, in this town, uh, you yeah. are murdered. You're murdered in this yes, town. Yes, you're murdered. You're murdered in this town because you wanted some mead and some food and the bartender wouldn't serve you. So you turn around and then you're attacked by rogues and then a necromancer revives you and you become a vampire. That's really? my best. That's... I don't have the name cause it's all based on like Swedish mm-hmm. name. fail. That means fail. you get to do the Valentina's do it. and Valentina's. then okay. I'll do some hot sauce with you. I'm going to try this. Uh, I haven't had this in a while. The New Orleans oh. Bourbon okay. Street Pepper Sauce. I got it all over my hands. <laughs> it's still good. Oh. <laughs> I actually like Valentina's. It's a sick fire sauce. Yeah, it's not bad. It's it's light on the heat. Very, very light on the heat. Yay, 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 yay. There he goes. Cheers. Well, let's, uh, I'm going to bump it up. What you doing? I'm going to add a pickle. Ugh. Nasty. Nasty. What? For those of you guys that don't know, me and Paul actually talk on Discord pretty frequently. So we're we're already buddies and have, have discussed all this stuff. And I think that's why it's hard for me to ask you questions because we already talk about all this stuff all the time. And I'm like, I'm trying to think of stuff that I haven't asked you before. Um, but yeah, we're Did friends. You know, we're friends off stream, like pretty well. What's up? Did you know that Raziel is the angel of in of um of clear scene? Raziel. And that's why protagonist. Yeah, you have told me that that's before. But why? Why did you pick Raziel? Um, because he's a confused character who's learning about morality, and that's kind of his journey as a soul reaver. He has to distinguish between the old gods and his enemy who is kind of his father. Um, so that really resonates with me because I have daddy issues. I just do. And um, it helped me process a lot of things through a context that was helpful. Raziel, you are worthy. <laughs> Raziel. I like that with the vocal tone too. Um is, is Legacy of Cain the best video game ever or just the one that you think you know the most about? It has one of the most profound stories that I wish had a tr- had a, an end to it. Um, personally, what I would do is I would have Cain because at the end of, spoilers, this game is like 10 years old, dude. The Soul Reaver has the soul of Raziel in it and he's been avoiding getting stabbed by it because his soul will enter the sword. So that game, like, end. single-handedly influenced your music, essentially. Very much so. So did Tasmania. Tasmania? Um, so did Batman. The original song that I um, heard at five years old, four or five years old, was Streets of Desolation. And that inspired me to be a musician. And that's on the Tasmania, like, like Tasmanian Batman. Devil? Oh, okay, okay. It's Batman. What it's song Batman. From, from the Tasmanian Devil inspired you? From the Tasmanian Devil. Is that not what Tasmania is? No. Batman. Batman. 
Oh, I'm tripping. I don't I don't know anything about Tasmania and Batman. I just know Batman. <laughs> I thought the Tasmanian so, devil the whole time. I was like, there must have been some heat oh, on that soundtrack. <laughs> We're going to do a pickle for that. <laughs> I thought there was going to be something crazy on the soundtrack back in like the Nintendo or Super Nintendo, which is possible. Go check it. There's some Go dope soundtrack. It. Batman on the uh, Nintendo Entertainment System. Check it. It's fire. Batman NES soundtrack. Streets of Desolation. All right. Let's see if we can find this. Desolation. You can actually find me playing piano to it. Oh, I got it. You got it. This song single-handed inspired me to be a musician. Really? I remember this game. This game was super hard. It's metal. Batman, Streets so of Desolation. Is so when you you so you take that influence into making video game music, and but yep. your your music seems like way more cinematic and huge in as a, as a whole. Is there is there ever plans to do or do you have a bunch of like eight bit style stuff also? I do. I my specialty is hybrid orchestration. So that means I use synthesizers and um, instruments, real instruments or uh, VSTs that emulate uh, real instruments. So you can find some of my stuff um, at Hollow Wanderer on Facebook uh, or not Facebook, uh, YouTube. If you want to check out four albums that flow into each other, uh, each song flows into the next, each song, each album loops. And um, I'm working on a series for them. Super crazy, man. You never stop hustling. How many instruments do you play total? Uh, vocals, piano, and guitar. Does that also include bass? Um, I can play bass, but I find it kind of boring for me because I don't have quite the talent to hear the low end as well as I... Like my friend Ben VFU's phenomenal. Um, then there's John Duke. I believe John Duke of uh, Immortal Possession fire if someone sees you live what could they expect for for a show um a backing track an epic story and something that will actually enrich your life enrich your life all right i'm just jumping back to uh your youtube channel so people can hit the subscribe button if they if they see it um enrich your life can you elaborate can you elaborate on that a bit so there's a lot of dogma in religion and there are core lessons that can kind of be extrapolated and extracted and it doesn't matter what faith or spirituality you believe in they're helpful it's questions like why do we exist and under what context do we exist love or fear because that determines that changes your complete outlook on life um yeah Stuff like that. Questions that are deep that you spend years on and people spend their entire lives trying to answer. So I offer a perspective with some general information and a story that um, I feel is compelling. And first and foremost, I'm not doing this because somebody is telling me to. I'm doing this because it's deep in my soul and I just want to share my talents and skills um, and listening to other people's feedback is some of the most humbling and joyful experiences I can have because it allows me to use somebody as a sounding board. And maybe I communicated something that wasn't done right or as well or as effectively under these circumstances when with some self-reflection, I'd be able to execute because that's what I really believed in. There's conceptualizing something and then there's executing on it. 
What advice would you give a local artist that's just starting out, that's maybe 12 or 13 years old, just picked up an instrument for the first time and wants to form a band? First of all, give yourself a pat on the back because that's ambitious. And um, a lot of people are going to say, you're too young. Don't do it. Wait till you're older. Screw them. Go for it. Um, Book a local show. Um, You don't have to get into drinking, smoking, or anything like that. Um, There are a few bands um, that started like that. Um, I'm thinking of like some local guys, Fall of Earth. Um, They're younger than me. And they're killing it. They just came out with an album. And I believe that one of the key principles that people miss or they gravitate towards is that this is a family. Metal is a family. It doesn't matter where you're from, what you've done. Um, You are going to find people who resonate with you on a deep level. Like my brother, Dan Lowy, um, he has a group where everybody just kind of chips in. And I found out about new bands that way, like their fall from Robert. Um, Shout out to Robert Luco, who gave me the shirt. Fire. Those are the kinds of things. He literally gave me the shirt off his back. Where do you find that? Yeah, that is cool. That is cool. Paul, what do you got going on the rest of the day? Um, I'm going to go check in on a neighbor, check in on some friends, maybe have a nap, make something to eat, and um, probably play some piano. What's your favorite munchy snack in the whole world? You already answered the question. Munchies. The munchie bag with the multi? Munchies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like variety. Do you get the spicy ones or just the regular ones? Um, I don't know if we have the spicy ones in Canada. If we do, I need to get my hands on them now. Yeah, they're pretty good. But yeah, both bags are awesome. Hell yeah. Yeah. Well, variety is a spice of life. Did you um, Did you first start doing vocals when you were younger or did you first start playing guitar or piano? Well, I was raised in the Latter-day Saint faith or Mormons and I found a lot of problems there with um, honesty integrity and polyamory that personally didn't resonate with me because there was a slant of um, domination or dominance on people, especially um, reproductive rights and acceptance of other people who have their own cultures and their belief systems and just kind of a general negativity that bothered me. Um, So I learned to sing choir first. Um, and then a huge influence on my voice was Nevermore's Worlding, um, from Sanctuary and Nevermore. And, um, my goal is to kind of answer, provide an answer, not the answer, an answer to some of the deeper questions we all have. That's deep. That that is a deep, deep goal right there, dude. Well, man, this is a lot of fun. I, I appreciate you hanging out with me for a little while, dude, and talking hey, it's all talking good. about the band, talking about life and 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 intergalactic things and Azrael and just all kinds of cool stuff. And I'm excited, man. I'm excited because you've done a lot of things in the video game world. You you never stop making music, and I love your routine. How you just wake up, hit the coffee, and get right to work right away, and and just a cool, positive guy, man. I appreciate you. If there's one thing I would leave us on, it is a universal truth that I personally have tried to integrate into my life. Um, it's that I look like Jack. Bob. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Um, a long, long time ago, me and my brother BG, we was walking down a long, lonesome road when all of a sudden, the guy did it. <laughs> anyway, there Cheers. is love. That is, that is hilarious. It sounds like the police about to get somebody in the background, too. Yeah, whoop whoop. The sound <laughs> of the police. Woo woo woo. Ladies and gentlemen, but, Saint Paul, yeah. the pit protector. Have yeah, a great day, yeah. brother. I appreciate you. I protect the good pit. <laughs> <laughs> he does. He be protecting him. Welcome to the local band smokeout.